ladies and gentlemen, you have found yourself in the full midst of yet another Jury Saturday. My name is Justin Robert Young. Uh, I host uh, this show. It's a show uh, that is a very, very selfish show. It's a very personal show. It's a show uh, where literally uh, I can talk and you can't. And uh, there's no one else to stop me. Last week, we kind of got away from that. It was me and... uh, me and Brett, uh, the Amtrekker Roundsville, and, and we talked about all sorts of stuff and, and mountain rapists. Uh, but we're not going to do that again. It's back to just me. Just me talking to you. Although you want to know what? We're going to get to me and Brett because I think me and Brett um, have uh, a, an idea. Maybe it's about time. It's about time that a, 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 a jury and Brett podcast kind of uh, made its way into the world. Things went so well last week that um that we are uh we're we're we're, we're going to figure that out. And I have a lot to ask of you guys. There's a lot that I want your guys' opinion on including this. Uh we're going to talk about the NRA announcement and really I just I want uh, there's so much to say and there will be so much said about guns and gun control over the next 3 to 4 months. It's going to be the only thing we talk about because, you know, the the drums of war are now a beating, and it will be uh, it will be a big thing. So, I want to talk about kind of uh, why I, I am I am ne- I I have a problem with kind of political labels because all labels involve systems, and systems are what frustrate me. I'll get to that in a second. But let's before we talk about gun control in this country, let's talk about something really important. Uh, I am bored today, very bored, nothing to do, Brett and Katie, gone, Ashley, not here yet, uh, uh, Chad, no, I, I'd call Chad normally, let's hang out buddy, he's in Texas, can't do that, ain't nobody, I got nothing to do, <laughs> I got nowhere else to go, which is why this show's gonna last eight hours, um, no, so I wanna go see a movie tonight, there's a lot of good movies that are out, uh, and I'm going to I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. This is going to be a collaborative thing. So maybe even, for some of you guys, this can be like we're all going to the movies together. Let's pick a movie that we're going to see together tonight. And here's what we're choosing. i got a straw poll up right now. Strawpoll.me slash 5868. Three movies that are out now. Um, this is 40. Zero Dark Thirty and The Hobbit. I didn't realize that Thirty and Forty were both uh, at the uh, at the, uh, uh, the the theaters. I believe they're all out today, or Friday rather. I have not seen The Hobbit. If I saw The Hobbit, I'd, I'd see it in, in high frame rate 3D at one of the IMAXs. I'm going to see one of these three movies tonight. Uh, so go ahead uh, and 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 hit me up strawpoll.me/slash five eight six eight to get your vote in right now. Now, I know Zero Dark Thirty is not in, uh, in, in all theaters, but I believe that in certain hoity-toity, fancy-pants cities like San Francisco, uh, it is. So I would like to go see that. This is a great segment that I'm just debuting here right now, which is Justin Phil's Airtime. While obviously checking Fandango on his app, on his on his app, on his ass, um, zero dark thirty, doo 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 Oh, I guess it's not out. So zero dark thirty is out. Is this his forty? Is that out? Jesus, am I not seeing anything? What just this is forty? Is that out? Boom. Yes, this is forty is out. So it's down to this is forty or the Hobbit. Uh, so disregard zero dark thirty because I can't see it. So if zero dark thirty wins, and literally I'm just going to be sitting home. Uh, so so do me a favor. Go ahead and vote uh, for either this is forty or the Hobbit. I'm going to go see one of them tonight. I'm probably going to go see the other one tomorrow. So, uh, but it, it, it'll be a fun collaborative thing. 
Go ahead and vote on that. We'll decide at the end of the show what I'm going to go see. And we can all talk about it on Twitter. Maybe we can have our own little hashtag. Maybe we can have a little jury movie night hashtag. We all go see it. We talk about our feelings. It's going to be great. Also, at the end of this, I want to review. I saw a movie last night that I really, really uh, felt strongly about, and it's called Young Adult. And I want to explain why, A, it might have been my favorite movie of last year, despite the fact that I just saw it last night, and, B, why I am positive why it was not popular. Because I don't think it was a movie that was meant to be popular. It was meant to be good. And that is something uh, that is a hard road to travel when you are in an industry that is designed to make money. But before I get to that, let's go ahead and talk about the NRA. Let's talk about Wayne LaPierre, which is a shockingly French-Canadian name for the NRA. I don't know why I would not think of French Canadians as gun-toting individuals, but I don't know why I wouldn't. I guess it's just because I, I think of Canadians as kind of nonviolent uh, people. You know, even like hockey enforcers are like generally like nice guys, you know, except for like Chris Simon. That dude tried to stab somebody in the face with a skate. Um, or he stepped on people with a skate. He was a mean guy. He was a mean, he was a really, all right, so maybe Canadians are violent people. Um, but the NR, Wayne LaPierre, obviously, this is a position, okay, a position that nobody wants to be in. If you were the CEO of Nabisco, when all of a sudden people around the country were dying under circumstances that involved your crackers, you wouldn't want to be the CEO of Nabisco who's in charge of going out and talking about how awesome crackers are, okay? This is a shitty analogy and metaphor, granted. But it's just nobody, even if you are a gun fan, a gun nut, okay? You don't want to be Wayne LaPierre of the NRA. It's a sensitive situation. So there's a couple ways you can handle it, okay? And the NRA, uh, by and large, a fairly... Uh, Let's just say they don't get the benefit of the doubt in the media, okay? They are routinely criticized by people who disagree with, with their, their, their central cause. People who don't like guns. They are the chief villain for people who want more gun control. And as things tend to happen, when you're on the opposite side of a very, very passionate rift, demonization happens. People, you know, now it, it's not enough that you are on the opposite side ideologically. You're also a bad person. This happens on both sides. This is tribalism, pure and simple. Now, the NRA is, is an interesting organization. You know, they, there's, there's elements of the NRA that don't get talked about a lot, including its very uh, friendly relationship with the civil rights movement in this country. That when, author when, when, when the authorities were not a friend to a segment of our population, see fire hoses and black protesters, um, the NRA helped arm civil rights leaders. They were very passionate about the rights of a certain citizenry of America being able to defend themselves against the government and the authorities. Okay, that's something that doesn't really get talked about a lot because, you know, everybody likes to kind of fit conservatives into this one big racist ball. Uh, which, by the way, a horrible children's toy, a, 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 a children's toy, uh, <laughs> which for which is sitting on shelves. You can't move racist ball. Mom, get me a racist ball for Christmas. OK. If you're good, bounce, bounce, bounce. I think Asians can't drive. It's the ball. It's not me. Uh, but Wayne LaPierre comes out, and after the Newton massacre, which, again, the worst thing possible, there's a couple ways that he can go. There's a couple ways that the NRA can go. If it were me, if, let's say, I were the head of the NRA, Justin Robert Young, 
non-gun owner of the of, head of the NRA in some sort of fluke accident. This is like a King Ralph kind of movie. All of a sudden, because of some weird succession thing, I get a, 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 a something mailed to me. Congratulations, you are now the president of the National Rifle Association. I would be very, very aggressive and very, very public about support and help for shooting victims. Because I would look at my lobby as one that is in defense of uh, somebody's right to own guns, but not ignorant of the fact that they are very, very dangerous. And that very often bad people can get a hold of them and can do great damage. Because at the end of the day, you have to understand that this is a war for perception. And if you get into a fight about the danger that guns cause versus the safety and freedom for which you are allegedly protecting, or that is the mission statement for which you are protecting, is the freedom to own them and the safety for which they provide. That's what you want to keep at the forefront. And you don't want to be ignorant of like just putting your fingers in your ears when you hear about danger. And you can't just pay it lift service like, hey, it happens. Because when it happens, it ends people it, it, you know, fairly permanently, more permanently than, let's say, knives do. So, he does not choose to be very, very aggressive in his support. He instead, knowing that there is blame on him and his lobby, and also that we are, again, that, 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 you hear that, kids? Do you hear that? That is the beat of the drums of war, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting ready. This is going to be... Remember the division over health care a couple years ago? That shit is preseason. That is the worthless game of preseason football where the starters don't even get in for more than a series, okay? Where you're seeing the third uh, string quarterback take the most of the snaps, that's going to be child's play compared to us going to the mat on, on, on gun control. And for whatever you want to say about President Obama, that dude has issues for which he wants to go down in history because of. Gun control is now one of them. We're going to the mattresses on this. Um, for the record, uh, people are saying Wayne Lapierre is, uh, is not Canadian. French background, but not Canadian. I didn't say he was Canadian. I just thought that Lapierre was a French-Canadian sounding name. Here is what he says in a nutshell. More guns make us safer, not shocking from the NRA. That's their point of view. Um, but he goes further, understanding that there is a blame problem. Instead of saying, listen, we're not ignorant to this. We understand that this is a divisive issue, and we want to be supportive. We don't want to be shown to be without a conscience. We don't want to be shown to be without heart. We want to show that we are big-hearted people that want to preserve a freedom in America. That would be, if it were me, that would be how I would run the organization. They do not do that. They decide to shift blame to video games and, and movies and Kick it with an argument that might as well go buy a new Sonic Youth record and watch Clueless in theaters. Because that shit is 90s as fuck, man. Are we really? Are we really still going to be running the, the Blame It on Video Games gambit? Come on! The fact is that violence in this country has declined steadily. Declined steadily, year on year. Violence. In total, gun violence, in specific. You mentioned Mortal Kombat in his speech. Mortal Kombat! Has there been a fucking relevant Mortal Kombat game out in the last three years? I actually don't know. <laughs> I, probably. I'm sure there's a Mortal Kombat game, but not a relevant one. Not the relevance 
to to which it was in its heyday. Crash Kincaid says there's no guns in Mortal Kombat. Well, I don't know. Isn't like isn't there a Jax fatality where he pulls out guns? I think there's a Jax fatality where he punts out guns. Uh, he embarrassed himself. And this is what I said before. It's not... They were saying Striker, not Jax. Here is the problem. And this is what frustrates me. I love political divisions when it comes to, to, to political races. Because I like the brand battle between uh you know between people i like that i find that fun and also i very much enjoy that we all get to talk about politics we all get to express our opinions and and we all get to yell at each other because i think yelling at at each other is healthy what i hate is governing and i i I hate this i hate all the fiscal cliff stuff because it it's just it shows you just how incompetent all these people are and 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 how much they really don't care about anything they say. They're literally just trying to preserve their phony baloney jobs here, gentlemen. But systems frustrate me. Systems are corrupt. Systems are by people for which don't want to lose their jobs. That frustrates me. And it frustrates me when systems masquerade themselves in the cloak of causes. If I were somebody for which gun violence or sorry, gun gun violence was a concern, I would hate the person who spoke. Who, I would hate Wayne Lapierre uh, of the NRA. If I was someone for whom gun the rights to own and bear arms was an important part of my life, I would be embarrassed by what I saw. For this reason, there was nothing that was said yesterday that's going to prepare gun owners. For a political fight by people who are not only more savvy, but this is right now a, 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 a culture where you can't speak up in opposition. You can't say, hey, I'm for guns right now, because the answer is look at all these dead children. Which is why, of course, the politics on the other side... Uh, the politicians on the other side want to ram gun control through right now because it's easy to do it now. And it gets me very, very, uh, I get very anxious when, when, when people who are, are pushing for gun control right now say we need to do it now. We need to do it now before we forget how angry we are because that, to me, sounds like an angry mob. That sounds like let's sharpen the pitchforks and let's let's stab this thing in the heart before we can think twice. And I don't think that great policy comes from that. And I think that any policy is harder to unwind than it is to wind. Rabbit Badger says, strike while the iron is hot. Republicans uh, do that too. Cough the Patriot Act. Cough. Does that mean the Patriot Act is a good idea? No. No, I don't think anybody would say the Patriot Act was a good idea. So why do we want to do it now? Why would we want to do it now? I had a conversation with, with uh, I've, been, I've been talking a lot lately about people who work in nonprofits. And the various people that I've known throughout my life and, and I've, I've talked to recently, there's been a recurring theme that people get into nonprofits because they believe and they love these causes. They are open and big hearted people. Does that make them the most effective administrators on the planet? No. It often is people who are not great administrators. And sometimes heart and drive and love do not equate the same thing as progress and efficiency. And oftentimes those people get wrapped up. And maybe they're not the best at getting their message out. Now, the NRA is obviously an advocacy group. You may not agree with what they're advocating, But I think that they did not serve the people for whom they are portending to represent, either their members or other people who might align themselves with their beliefs. I think they did a pretty shitty job. I think if you're blaming video games, like, fucking dude, for real. Come on. Video games? You want to get Lana Del Rey up there? Sing about what caused the fucking violence? Just such nonsense. Oh, my God. 
And if that's the guy that's supposed to be on the other side of the information war, uh, then we're going to be going door to door collecting everybody's pea shooters uh, in the next two weeks. Because if you're going to balance video games cause this versus the specter of 12 dead children, ugh. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's frustrating. It's extraordinarily frustrating. 20 dead children, sorry, not 12. 20 dead, not 12. All right. Um, switching gears. And there's no way to switch gears from a discussion about the NRA to a discussion about a movie that came out last year, except for what I just did, which is the transition to the fact that I watched Young Adult last night. If you haven't seen Young Adult, it's a movie that's uh, directed by Jason Reitman, son of Ivan, and written by Diablo Cody, the same writer and director team who uh, did Juno, the popular, popular film. Um, it's on Netflix, uh, so go ahead and, and, and check it out. It's, uh, it's a movie that I've always kind of intended to watch that uh, I, I never really got around to doing it until I saw it just randomly on Netflix. I decided to take some time out and, and, and watch it, and fuck is it good, man. It is really, 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 really good. Uh, but it is not a movie that is that was very popular. It's certainly not as popular as, as, as Juno, and I don't even know if it got any kind of Oscar recognition. The plot centers around Charlize Theron. She's a writer of a Sweet Valley High type of young adult series, one for which she is a ghost writer uh, because the, the person who started the series, his name is on the front of every book. And uh, she's... A very selfish, very self-destructive person who decides that the thing that she needs to do is uh, to leave the big city of Minneapolis and go to her small town of Mercury, Minnesota to convince her high school boyfriend that uh, she uh, should or he should move out to the city with her, despite the fact that he's married and is having a children. Uh, I'm also being told that uh, Young Adult is on Amazon Instant. So, here's my my thought on this. At the core of the movie is a question. Do you find happiness easily? And I found this to be a fairly profound question. Because, it, to me, it's more effective than saying, are you a happy person? Do you find happiness easily? And I guess really at the root of it is that when the capacity for happiness, when the sparks of happiness are in front of you, do you know how to kindle them into flame? Or do you consistently look at them dumbfounded and say, well, that was just a little bit of happiness and now let me move on and, and be upset about the emptiness that is in my life? And the movie is brilliant on a lot of levels, uh, specifically that one, but also it's it's about youth and and high school and uh, Charlize Theron winds up uh, having a a friendly relationship with the Patton Oswalt character, who is similarly kind of trapped in a uh in 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 high school you know he is defined by something that happened in high school and i don't want to spoil it but uh you know where she wants to stay in high school because it was when the world was in front of her she had everything going for her and now it's not that life has gone bad life has gone very very good for her but she still clings to what promise meant as opposed to what life is including all the disappointments that come along with it Whereas Pat Oswalt's character is kind of forced to live his life through the prism of high school because of a debilitating event. It's exceptionally acted. And it, 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 Charlie's Theron, man, I'll tell you what. I don't know why we don't... Um, she won Best Actress at the Golden Globes for it. And, and she, Jesus, she fucking killed it. She absolutely killed it in this flick. Uh, so good. I don't know why we don't just talk about Charlie Theron like she's Meryl Streep. Because Charlie Theron, I'm sorry, all she does is fucking crush it in every single movie. 
And not only can she crush it, but she can play against type. She, I mean, this is a movie that very, very, very much, she needs to be a beautiful woman in this movie to have it be effective. She's certainly gorgeous, but she is uh, brilliant at being as pretty or as ugly on the inside as she is pretty on the outside. And, and not in any kind of, like, sneeringly evil way, although she does a plenty of cunny things in this flick. But in, in, in a really, really complex uh, complex way. Uh, it's just awesome. It's just fantastic. And this is going to be one of those features on this podcast. If you're just now listening to this year podcast, this is going to be a feature for which every once in a while I'm going to watch something on Netflix and I'm going to talk about it. Despite the fact it's probably going to be old as fuck. It's probably going to be dusty and musty. But I'm going to talk about it because literally it's my show and, uh, and, and, and I get to do whatever I want. Now people are saying monster. And that's what everybody talks about with Charlize Theron because it was easily her most daring role. She she put on a lot of prosthetics. She uglied herself up and absolutely murdered it. Uh, no pun intended for the movie about a serial killer. However, like that is, pardon the pun, like a monster movie. It's a flick where, you know, she's portraying somebody that we understand. We understand that this was a real serial killer. We understand that she is going to do these things, and we look at it in that prism. Take nothing away from her performance, which is fantastic, but it's harder to look at somebody like she is in Young Adult, where obviously she's selfish and venal and terrible, but you, you kind of go on a journey. You kind of want to like her, which is another theme in the movie, is that everybody wants to like the pretty girl that left the small town and went to the big city and made something for herself. They want to like her. And she consistently rejects that. So there we go. Um, people are suggesting, uh, go ahead, get your suggestions in for what uh, is going to come up next week on Justin watches an old ass movie on Netflix and talks about it to himself. Uh, people are suggesting NSFW Benjamin Franklin is saying uh, winner's bone with Jennifer Lawrence. i actually, I really, really, really want to see that. So I'll, I'll, maybe I'll check that out. Maybe that'll be next week on this uh, on this here podcast. Um, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our straw poll real quick. Speaking of movies, let's see what I'm going to see tonight. Unsurprisingly, it's The Hobbit. Uh, go ahead, strawpoll.me, uh, 5868. Now that I know that Zero Dark Thirty isn't out uh, in, in San Francisco, this makes seeing The Hobbit a lot easier. I'm definitely going to go see it in HFR. I'm going to go see it in HFR, 3D, IMAX, fart, fart, fart. Um, I'm going to get a lot of popcorn. It's going to be fun. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to go see the movie. I'll put it out. I'll put it in a little hashtag. We'll have a little hashtag conversation about it. And it'll be awesome. Um, there's a couple other movies. I kind of slacked off my movie scene in the last couple weeks. I was really up on shit, but I haven't seen Lincoln. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go see The Hobbit, but we'll see. I'm excited for The Hobbit. I'm reading The Hobbit on Audible, and, and it's, uh, it's very, very good. I want to, I want to get done with it so I can go on the Sword and Laser Goodreads forum and give my opinion. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be possible, MacBook Pro, to everybody go to their local theaters at the same time, but, uh, yeah, just keep an eye on Twitter, and we'll talk about it. It'll be fun. Maybe we'll even do a little hangout. We'll do a little Hobbit hole hangout, everybody. Maybe that'll be it. Uh, Flight with Denzel, people are saying in there. Um, you know, Flight was good. I think Denzel's got a, got a shot at, um, a, shot at a, a, a Best Actor nom. Oh, here's something really interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody, our favorite... Central New York liberal advocate, Rabbit Badger, here in the chat room. I really wanted to see slash like Zero Dark, but I'm pissed off about it. Conservative Hollywood promoting torture. Now, 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 Zero Dark 30 in a very, 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 very interesting position because it is simultaneously getting shit, getting shit 
for being a uh, uh, liberal propaganda, perpetrating a hero myth about uh, the uh, Obama administration and the murder of, uh, of, of, of Osama bin Laden, and getting shit right now, and uh, rather Badger saying, it was a joke! I, I understand, I understand. But there are people who are concerned about this film promoting torture. Even on that, being divisive. People looking at it and saying, well, look, they get credible information out of torture, and hey, look at this, uh, you are denigrating the, the jobs and the responsibilities of these people. Uh, to me, that's fairly, that's a good sign that it's an interesting movie when we're talking about these things. I think these things should be talked about. Um... But it seems like, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I want to see the movie, and I'm sure I'm going to really, really like the movie, but uh, I'm a little dubious when we start talking about it, as I have heard it mentioned, that it is in and of itself journalism, uh, that Mark Bowl, I believe his first name is Mark, I know his last name is Bowl or Boal, uh, did a lot of original reporting for the screenplay, and it is based on real people, or at least an amalgamation of real people uh the problem is it's easy i'm not saying that it's not true i'm saying it is easy to say that this is journalism when you don't have to show <laughs> your source material and you cannot be sued since it is in fact a fictionalization so it's hard for me to buy uh what you know, it's hard for me to buy the idea that this is, uh, you know, basically a investigational magazine piece come to life. NSFW Benjamin Franklin says, it's not true. The CIA director said so today. Now, now, if you were the CIA director, and let's say theoretically you found a schedule, uh, a point in your day when you weren't fucking your biographer. Wouldn't you say it was not true? What do you have to lose by saying it's not true? Because I'm surely, it's just even by the fact that the names aren't right, it's not exactly a fucking documentary. Any kind of dramatization is going to have liberties taken with it. So let's say, in a fictional world, that this is 95% true. That the that beat for beat, what happened is as it plays out in the film. If you were the CIA director, what the fuck would you say other than, of course, this isn't true? So, all that being said, I'm super excited to go see Zero Dark Thirty. Nothing, my friends, though nothing has my excitement all up in a dander but Django Unchained. Oh, Django Unchained. Oh, Django Unchained. There is nothing that can be said about that film that does not make me excited. Oh, they use the N-word too much. Oh, what? It's two and a half hours. What? What is it? It's two and a half hours. It has Leonardo DiCaprio as a sneering slave-owning racist who breeds black people to fight each other. What? The Drudge Report just ran a big gigantic picture of Quentin Tarantino with the N-word six times under it. What? There's nothing you can say that does not make me more excited for this film. Nobody is more talented, indulgent, and fearless than Quentin Tarantino. Nobody. And by all that, there are people who are more one of those three. There are more talented people. There are more indulgent people. There are more uh, fearless people. No one blends them. No one blends them like Tarantino. That is a two and a half hour movie. But I will fucking guarantee you that that shit is more watchable than a lot of other fucking super indulgent two and a half hour movies 
that you will be excited by elements of those movies. Then I Simpson here in the chat room is saying that he's seen all these movies. What do you fucking do for a living then is Sim then I Simpson? Are you a movie reviewer? Do you, how do you how are you watching all these movies? Oh, unless you unless you're in one of the guilds and you just get all the fucking screeners. God, I need to get into the writers guild. How can I get into the writers guild? Friends in the film industry screeners. Ah. Uh. All right, let me go ahead and put this out there. I'm not saying like this is a solicitation. Um but Justin Robert Young at gmail dot com. Holler at a brother if you get screeners and you want to send them to me. <laughs> because I will pay postage. <laughs> Justin Robert Young at gmail dot com. Holler at a player when you see him in the streets. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps it up. That's about all I got to say. You want to know what? I'm going to go ahead and say this is, I always try to do it. I always try to get in one more story when I know I should just wrap up the goddamn podcast. Um, but I will open it up to anybody uh, uh, in the chat room right now. If you have one more topic, one thing, because I always like when I, whenever I listen to personality-focused podcasts, what I always kind of like the most is is when I, I I read a news story, and I'm like, man, I wonder what they think about it. So, if for some reason you've seen a news story over the last couple of days and you would like to hear my opinion on it, then go ahead and write it right now. Um, I already see one of them in there that I do have an opinion on. Uh, and 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 I will get to it in in a, in a hot minute. I do just want to say one thing about um, chat realm. Yesterday, uh, we had a big Christmas special uh, for NSFW show. It should be either up live in the podcast stream sometime today, uh, if not tomorrow. Um, thank you to everybody who tried to watch live. There were some technical issues uh, in terms of the quality at the beginning. It, it took a long time to get started, and then we were kind of at a, at a hard cap on uh, trying to get it done. But uh, we we opened up presents uh, and and we just had some great ones. Bill Duran made us these awesome uh, Diamond Club belt buckles with NSFW in the middle, and then uh, Chat Realm got me and Brian custom Chuck Taylor Converse high tops, and fuck man, they look awesome. They look so goddamn dope, and I'm so excited to wear them. And I'll just say this because I could gush and just be ridiculous. Um, about about how much I care about chat realm, but my entire life I've 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 only I've I've worshipped at the altar of artists for whom probably never got mainstream recognition, but had fans who got it, and I prided myself on being a fan who got it who wanted to go on not a journey, but the specific journey for which these artists wanted me to take them. Tarantino would probably be one of them. Uh, certainly, I mean, he, he is he's a guy who has a lot of mainstream popularity, but he would be somebody for whom I want to follow his vision. And and uh, Chappelle, before Chappelle's show, was, was another one. It... You have no idea how much my goals as a child, as a teenager, and as an adult are so fulfilled by what Chat Realm uh, is and, and what Chat Realm has been to me and to Brian and to not only NSFW show, but also every other um, every other show uh, that we've decided to do. So from the bottom of my heart, on this holiday season, Thank you so much to you guys. It, it, it again, just absolutely means the world to me. All right. Uh, we got the one, uh, we got the one story here. Uh, real quick mini story. I got a question for you. What's up with Mr. Maine? Is he going to be back for weird things soon? Yes. Yes. I think signs point to yes. Uh, Andrew's been in LA to be honest. I mean, like, here's the thing with Andrew in LA, like he's, 
just in demand. His his writing career has kind of taken him to a point where now he's he's taking meetings and um he's absolutely uh you know just there's got a lot of people a lot of really interesting people interested in his creative works specifically Public Enemy Zero and specifically Angel Killer um it's all his news um you know so I don't want to talk about it much more than I already have but He's there. Um, he's in there. Uh, Rabbit Badger, what's the big deal I hinted about on Twitter this week? I hinted that there was news that would make a lot of people happy. That was that uh, Brian had uh, given his daughter the middle name of Daphne. For those of you who don't know the significance of that, earlier this year, me, uh, Brian, and Veronica Belmont, as well as Chad Johnson, worked on a short-lived and little-watched video game podcast called Game On. Uh, one of the the um, recurring characters on that show was one portrayed by Veronica Belmont and written by myself uh, called Daphne the Gamer Girl, uh, which was kind of a parody of female vloggers. And... Um, you know, it's something that's kind of stuck around and really has had a life with Chat Realm. Daphne and Max Trollbot have easily been the two things that have come out of Game On that have been mentioned about the most. Uh, and and both of them have lived longer than we started, uh, or we stopped having involvement in them. So uh, as, as an honor to that, he uh, named Calliope Brushwood with the middle moniker of Daphne. I was joking around uh, today with uh, my uh, platonic friend, Ashley Paramore, that uh, if, if there was a pregnancy between us, that to one-up him, we would name the, our, our, the first name of the child would be Max Trollbot, and the middle name would be uh, please follow at Healthy Addict and at Justin R. Young. You know, just to really stick it to the old man. Fuck you, pussy. Hiding that shit in the middle name. Boom, daddy. Um, all right. <laughs> so, here's the last uh, the last topic. I feel like we need a sounder for the last topic. Let's go ahead and get a, a, a sounder for uh, the last topic. Here we go. This is the jury is out rant. Bad news is... All right, folks, here we go. The final rant of the day is about The Walking Dead. Just when I thought I was out. Just when I thought I was out on The Walking Dead. You pull me... Back in. Um, so The Walking Dead made news because Glenn Mazzara, who was brought in to replace Frank Darabont when he was chased off The Walking Dead, um, is now leaving. He will leave after season three. Well... Avoiding any and all very, very easy cliches about a horror series seeming to have a haunted showrunner chair. I am tempted to say, because I have not been a fan of how Glenn Mazzara has run the show, um, that this brings hope for optimism. That maybe there will be somebody else who will say, hey, listen, there is a lot of potential to these stories there's a lot of potential to these actors there's a lot of potential to these storylines and uh we should go in a different direction now i will tell you why i don't feel that uh at the end of this but i will say again why you could feel optimism at the end of this season you really have a lot of dead time in the source material. And my theory has always been that this will be kind of where the books and uh, the show kind of sort of permanently split off. 
and we will um we'll maybe get peppered here and there with certain characters and certain elements of things that happen in the books but like there's just not a ton there immediately after the Woodbury storyline that I believe would make a compelling television show. It made a fairly compelling comic book read, but, you know, it was not, uh, it was when I got the most bored I have with that, with that run, for whatever that's worth. So if you had somebody that was very creative and you had somebody that was very, very forward thinking in what they wanted to do, then, you know, this would be a great blank palette. You would say to somebody who has a really good idea for zombie fiction, hey, give me your best zombie fiction story. Let's tell that through the prism of The Walking Dead. I don't think they're going to do that. I think that The Walking Dead at this point is a sci-fi channel drama. It is the most popular version of Warehouse 13 you could find. And not to say that Warehouse 13 is a shitty show. Warehouse 13 is just kind of mindless entertainment. I wanted The Walking Dead... To be Mad Men. I wanted it to be the horror equivalent of Breaking Bad. I wanted it to be the genre. I wanted to do for horror what Battlestar Galactica did for science fiction. I don't know if we're going to get that. Ever. I don't know that the person they're going to hire is going to want to make it like that. I think they're just going to say, hey, listen, a lot of people just keep tuning in and um, we're just going to keep running these fairly simple storylines and killing off main characters and, you know, have people stab zombies in the head and, you know, eh. Chimera 96. So what shite holds more promise at this point? The Walking Dead or Falling Sky? Falling Skies, rather. You know, I don't know. I haven't seen Falling Skies, but, uh, you know, I, I would say it's there. That's what it is. The Walking Dead is Falling Skies. It's all right. Some people like it. It's a more popular Falling Skies. Audio Revolver says, you won't get that because AMC sucks as a network. I mean, it's hard to say that AMC sucks as a network, right? Like... It's a pretty good track record. They got Mad Men. They got Breaking Bad. They've kind of established themselves as a credible HBO competitor in terms of quality narrative television. So it's hard to say they suck as a network. They don't seem to have handled success well. That would be safe to say. But it's hard to say that they're not a good network. They have continuous showrunner problems. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, they got a lot of financial issues. Have they handled them well? No. But, you know, hell, HBO has had showrunner issues. Because a lot of showrunners are fucking nuts. Everybody, go ahead. I'll tell you what. You want to know, you know Jerry's, uh, Jerry's Book Club. I want to make a book recommendation real quick. Um, the Revolution Was Televised by Alan Seppenwall. Go ahead on, uh, on Amazon. Go buy that. It's in paperback. It's an ebook. Treat yourself. Great book. If you like television and, and you, like me, kind of believe that television is in a golden age and has been for the past 10 years, uh, go ahead and read it. It, it, it uh, talks about the shows that changed television. Um, specifically, but not limited to, Lost, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, Battlestar, Buffy, um, when the Buffy chapter is basically a love letter to Joss Whedon and, and a lot of really interesting stories about how Buffy kind of came to be. Uh, and, and many more. I, the Shield's on there. I skipped reading the Breaking Bad and the Shield chapters, full disclosure, because I still want to watch those series. In fact, I will end with you guys not on that note, but on this note. Two things. 
Hopefully by the end of today, this will have a podcast feed. This very show. But also, I want to kind of do a few more shows. And, and here are the two other shows that I want to do. Tell me if you are excited about it. The first show would be uh, me and Brett. I want to do kind of a Smodcast style, just literally bullshitting about whatever me and Brett show. Because I really liked last week's episode of this show, and uh, I thought it was funny. And I think also because I'm, I'm moving out of this apartment, and uh, I would like a reason to hang out with Brett every week. So, um, that's the first one. And the second one is this. I want to do a book club for television shows. Here's my thought. I want to do a series of, and this will probably be maybe a, I don't know if it's a YouTube thing or a podcast thing. I think it might be a YouTube thing. But I want to watch a series and uh, every four episodes, I want to talk about those last four episodes. So somebody um, who... Uh, somebody who is watching a series for the first time. Because I, I really, really loved, when I was watching Lost, the, the episode recaps by Doc Jensen on, on Entertainment Weekly became such a gigantic um, a gigantic thing for me. I loved what, listening, uh, reading his breakdowns, rather, uh, almost as much as I loved watching the show, especially when it wasn't a great episode. I loved reading his recap because it was just so well written and so dense and so amazing and always referenced all these other books and stuff and, and, and it gave me other stuff to think about and read. But I wanted to do so basically like in a in a twelve episode season you'd get uh maybe three installments of it. People are saying after buzz T V Maybe does something similar, uh, which is fine. I mean, I'm not saying it's a new idea. I'm saying it's an idea that I would, uh, I've thought about for a while and I think I would like to do. And I would like to start with Breaking Bad. I would like, uh, I would like to start doing this series with Breaking Bad. And so maybe what it is, is I do... Every four episodes, I I maybe interview, um, or I talk to somebody who's a fan of the show, either a friend of mine or or a te- television critic or something like that. But it would be kind of, uh, you know, it wouldn't come out maybe on a regular schedule, uh, or I would try to produce the three of them. I would watch through the episodes and everything. So um, there we go. But I need names for both of them. So go ahead, uh, Justin Robert Young at gmail dot com, and uh, I will um, give me names. Give me names for the Brett, the me and Brett podcast, me and Amtrekker, and give me a name for the uh, the the companion piece to these series. So it would start off like each season would get three episodes. That would be the idea of the television series one. Um. JB Bites? I don't know. That kind of sounds a little 90s. If you put the Bites, if you spelled Bites with a Y, maybe that would be. Uh, the name for Brett and me, Distracted, people are saying. Okay, these are all great. Send them to JustinRobertYoung at gmail.com. That about brings us to the end of Jury Saturday. I'm going to go see The Hobbit, everybody. Follow me at JustinRYoung at gmail.com if you want to talk about The Hobbit. Uh, we're going to have a hashtag. Maybe I'll go do a, yeah, I'm going to come back here. We'll do a hangout. We'll fart on each other's balls. It'll be hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm done for today. Thank you very, very much for taking time out of your busy week to share with me. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen, before you next hear my voice, do me a favor and please don't die.